Spoiler alert right off the bat, the new MacBook Pro M4 Pro from Apple is absolutely a G14 killer. If you wanna just close this video down and go buy the M4 Pro, be my guest. However, if you wanna know why, then continue watching this video. And also, you might wanna stay tuned because there's a select group of people that should still choose the G14. We're gonna kick it off with the build quality, usability, upgrade path, look at the displays, and then we're gonna jump into the performance and talk through all of those things to help you with a confident buying decision. This video is brought to you by Asus ProArt Laptops, the laptops built from the ground up for creators. More information to come later in the video. Let's look at the build quality of these devices. They are so similar in their appearance outside of the massive slash, which I don't like. I'm on the no slash team, by the way. Um, I would love this laptop if it had the simplicity of just this simple logo here. But nonetheless, the slash exists and we have to own that. Um, the weight and thickness is so similar. The Apple MacBook Pro 14 M4 Pro is slightly thinner than the G14, ever so slightly. But pulling up the laptops, holding them up side by side with the weight and thickness, they're very close in weight. I almost feel like the G14 is slightly lighter, um, but keep in mind that the MacBook Pro has slightly thicker aluminum materials. It feels a bit more dense, a bit more rigid to the touch. And I'm gonna show you as I push on the top cover, both top covers have very little depression. The MacBook Pro just feels a little bit more rigid. The materials feel a little bit thicker to the to when you're holding the laptop. Now, going ahead, taking a look at the rounded edges on these laptops, I'm gonna show you that we have a stronger 90 degree angle. It feels like a little sharper edge here on the G14 compared to the softer edge on the MacBook Pro. So if you want a little bit more comfortable while holding the device, feel, I would go for the MacBook Pro. Now, while we are holding these devices, let's go ahead and check out the ports on the G14 versus the MacBook Pro. We have power adapters for both devices. I think that's absolutely awesome that we're not charging either device via USB-C. Gives us more direct power to the device. Two USB type Cs on the MacBook Pro with a headphone jack. On the G14, we have the HDMI, USB-C, USB-A, and a headphone jack. We have the HDMI, which was found on the other side of the G14 for the MacBook Pro, USB-C, USB-A, and micro SD card reader, whereas we have the USB-C and full-size SD card reader on the MacBook Pro, making to me the superior ports being the MacBook Pro. What do you think? Taking a look at the bottom covers on these devices, you can see a much different bottom cover experience. A lot more ventilation. We have a dedicated GPU that takes a lot of power and it produces a lot of heat versus the MacBook Pro, which has everything integrated into the chipset on that M4 Pro chipset. So that's one of the big differences is going to be uh, how these two laptops handle thermal management. Now, while we have them flipped over, obviously you can take the bottom cover off of the MacBook Pro, which reveals no upgrade options. It's just this big black blocks of nothing you can upgrade. Whereas we pull the bottom cover off of the G14, we do have access to an M.2 slot. So you can upgrade the boot drive inside of the device. So let's say it comes with one terabyte, you wanna upgrade that to two or four terabytes, whatever it might be. You can pull that drive out, reinstall Windows and boot up your laptop and have a much larger storage capacity on your device. Whereas if you wanted to do that for the MacBook Pro, you'd have to purchase it from the store with the amount of storage that you would like. However, that gets very expensive. And my great, great friend, Lori over at Tech Notice has produced a whole video on how to get the best storage um, out of your MacBook Pro with external setups and stuff. So definitely go over to his channel and check that out. It's really awesome. It's very robust. He gives a lot of great uh, feedback on how to have a better storage experience with the MacBook Pro without spending way more money and getting better warranty. And like he says, better performance and speeds. It's a really cool video. So now let's talk about the thermals as well while we have the laptops flipped over. And then we'll get back into some of the user experience and build quality elements. This video is brought to you by the Asus ProArt PX13, a two-in-one laptop built from the ground up for artists, designers, photographers, and videographers. This laptop provides a two-in-one pen compatible 3K OLED corning glass display that is durable and color accurate. It weighs three pounds and is just over a half an inch thick. It has all day battery life for productivity tasks, a durable aluminum chassis that exceeds stringent testing, and let's not forget about the Asus dial to streamline your workflow, providing access to your most commonly used tools. Equipped with the AMD Ryzen AI9 CPU, 32 gigs of RAM standard on every model, and an RTX 4050, 4060, or 4070, this device provides the necessary performance for even architecture and 3D modeling work. Check out my full review content of the Asus ProArt PX13 
2018 within the playlist linked in the YouTube cards above or the description below. For the G14 on the thermals, it has about 48 to 58 decibels of fan noise during the 4K export. I pushed the CPU really hard during the 4K export to take a nine minute clip placed in Premiere Pro, export it out at full quality 4K settings. Up to 58 decibels of fan noise with a CPU temperature of 86 to 92 degrees Celsius. This thing is hot and it's loud. Now let's go to the MacBook Pro. For the MacBook Pro on the 4K export, zero decibels of fan noise with a 57 to 63 degrees Celsius on the CPU. Now, for the MacBook Pro, we do see temperatures upward of 92 to 101 degrees Celsius with a 44 decibel fan noise, but that's during this 6K export. So if you do push this thing hard at the resolutions in 6K, you're gonna get fan noise and you're going to get some hotter uh, chipset. I, I always say CPU, but chipset temperatures on the MacBook Pro. But for 4K, quiet, cool, absolutely fantastic. All right, we're gonna move into more of the performance benchmarks later in the video. For now, let's jump back into the build quality and assembly. I'm gonna go ahead, flip the laptops over and do an open and close test with one hand here. And both laptops open and close easily with one hand. You can get your fingers in there, pop it open really nice. Uh, now let's go ahead and test out the screen flex, see if there's any screen flex, almost zero on the MacBook Pro, um, but then quite a bit on the G14. Now let's check out the bounce. The MacBook Pro stabilizes quite quickly where the G14 continues to bounce a little bit more. So if you're somebody who's on the go, maybe you're you know editing on a train or a plane or even sometimes in the back you know, of, a, of an Uber or something, you'll have a little bit more screen bounce on the G14. Now let's turn these two inward and check out the internals. And besides the gamer vibes on the G14 with like the colored background of the RGB keyboard, they look very similar. They both have these beds where the keyboards rest, speakers on the sides. We have the difference of the keys being up here and the power button where the power button's integrated uh, here into the uh, MacBook Pro. And we still don't have a fingerprint reader on the G14. That's something that I know a lot of people have complained about and it just still has not made it to the device, which I find quite amusing because they have other devices with fingerprint readers. So it's kind of interesting. Um, as far as the keyboards are concerned, the G14 has a quiet, snappy keyboard. The keys are not dipped. They're flat keys. Whereas in the MacBook Pro, we have the nice dipped keys. It's not too aggressive. It kind of flares up at the edges, um, but they're both about the same noise level. And they feel pretty similar with the depress and the snap back. So keep that in mind if you're looking for which keyboard is better. I prefer the dipped keys on the MacBook Pro. I like the feel of it. You can really feel where you're at on the key and you can get you know, good contact but the G14 is still a great keyboard. Now the trackpad is where we're gonna see the big difference. We have a haptic trackpad on the Apple MacBook Pro versus the manual click trackpad on the G14, which is one of the best manual click trackpads on the market. It's a glass trackpad. It's integrated very nicely into the chassis. It's not rattly. It's very secure, very firm, has a very good, strong, firm click. So I would say as far as trackpads are concerned, it is, it's one of the best for manual click trackpads. So it really depends on what you're looking for. Do you like haptic or do you like manual click? Choice is yours, my friend. Now here's this audio sample of me using the keyboards and trackpads so you can hear what they sound like for yourself. Also, there are webcams along the top bezel. Here's a sample of each of the webcams so you can check those out for yourself. This is the webcam on the MacBook Pro 14 inch model and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14 from 2024 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now, as we continue to take a tour of the interior of the laptop, you can see both have upward facing speakers. And I must say the G14, man, it has done really well this year, uh, really upping its game as far as the audio experience. I still lean towards the MacBook Pro. I still think they have a better speaker setup, uh, but here's an audio sample for yourself so you can hear and just decide for yourself which one you think is better.
we are still touring the inside of the laptops here. Now you can see there's the little notch on the or little, it's kind of a, it's kind of big, honestly, the big notch on the MacBook Pro where we do not have the big notch for the webcam on the G14. Also, we have rounded edges for the screen bezel. You can see that the interior of the screen is rounded rather than squared off for the G14. You can see the squared off edge here for the G14. So that's a little nuance, a little difference there. The Samsung Galaxy Book series also does the rounded edge just as some context. Um, but then the displays are very interesting. Um, this is something that I thought really the MacBook Pro would just dominate flat out. But as you look at the display on the G14, it comes with a really, really good display. On the G14, we have a 3K 2880 by 1800 at 120 hertz refresh rate, 479 nits of screen brightness, 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 1.25. Now for the MacBook Pro, we have a 4K display at 3024 resolution by 1964 at 120 hertz as well. We have up to around a thousand plus nits of screen brightness. They even say you can do like 1600 on certain settings. I usually keep my screen at around 300 nits, so that really doesn't matter to me, but that is definitely a strong selling point. 100% sRGB, 85% Adobe RGB, and 98% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 1.21, so slightly better Delta E, but I would say that being that this has a larger color gamut range, it's going to be able to reproduce more colors, and therefore it would make it more accurate than that slight percentage advantage for the Delta E on the MacBook Pro. So the G14 to me is a clear display winner in this head-to-head -head battle. Now the display is something that also affects the battery life. And let's talk about the battery life here. First and foremost, one thing that uh, Apple is very famous for is that no matter if you're plugged into power or you're unplugged and running on battery power, you will have full performance of the device. So these battery life results that you're seeing, full performance of the device. The battery life results you're gonna see for the G14 are not at full performance. You're not gonna be accessing the GPU, you're gonna be throttling the CPU, and so you'll be able to get good battery life, but it's not at the full performance of the device, okay? So just so we can contextualize that. Looking at the G14, first and foremost, 12 hours of productivity, about 10 hours of streaming video playback, and this again is on eco mode with the GPU turned off at about 20% screen brightness and Windows Battery Saver mode turned on. So the system is super optimized and you know kind of stifled, so to speak, to get these battery life results. Around seven hours of Photoshop and about four hours of video editing playback. That's not with the export, just playing back a clip on loop, 4K project, till the battery goes dead about four hours. Okay, now looking at the M4 Pro, 19 hours and 27 minutes at about half brightness, give or take. I didn't really mess with the brightness, I just did it where it was comfortable. 20 hours and 11 minutes of streaming video playback, nine hours and 12 minutes of Photoshop work, and that's pretty intense Photoshop work. Seven hours and 54 minutes of that playback where it's just looping the 4K clip. And then I actually edited, so I was like doing editing, allowing it to play back. I was like interacting with the device and then I exported the project and that got about seven hours and five minutes of battery life. So the exporting is a bit more intensive on the uh, chipset and on the system and therefore it cut about an hour of battery life out of the test. Now I'd say one advantage that the G14 has compared to the MacBook Pro is gonna be pricing. It's gonna be slightly more affordable for the RTX 4070 version with 32 gigs of RAM for the G14 compared to the latest Apple MacBook Pro M4 Pro with 24 gigs of unified RAM. So if you wanna look at the exact live pricing, head down in the description below, click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Let's go ahead and dive into the spec out of each of these devices. As mentioned, this has the RTX 4070 and 32 gigs of RAM, and it comes with the Ryzen 9 8945 H and one terabyte SSD. The Apple MacBook Pro 14 inch model I have is the M4 Pro. It has 24 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. And I have the 20 core GPU and 16 core neural engine. So that's the spec out we have of these two devices. Let's dive into the performance and check out the differences we have here. Looking at Geekbench single core and multi-core, the MacBook Pro really throws some hammers. We have more than a thousand points more in single core, over 10,000 more points in multi-core. So multi-core and single core, it's just, it's a laughing situation. These are simulated benchmarks. So just be aware, we're gonna get to the real world here in just a minute and things might change a little bit. So I think you'll be surprised. We have a 64 point difference in Cinebench single core, almost a thousand point difference for multi-core with Cinebench. Now getting into the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark, 
we have a large difference as well. 11,873 versus 7,248. Substantially uh, different, about 4,000 points different. Now, before you just throw out the G14 and just go for the MacBook Pro, we gotta get through two more sections, video editing and 3D modeling. So hang with me. First, we're gonna start at 3D modeling and then we'll get into video editing. This is the big caveat because for 3D modeling, and I'm gonna start putting up the benchmarks on the screen just so you can get some context here. Most applications are not going to be available on the MacBook Pro. Now, more and more have become available over the past couple of years since Apple launched its you know, M Silicon, but we're still seeing the majority of Autodesk programs on x86 primarily. And so that is where if you want to do 3D modeling and you're serious about your craft and you're serious about your work and you have to do it at the highest level, the x86 Windows platform is just going to have to be what you choose. As I mentioned, there are ways to use programs and there's even some programs that are becoming native, but as a whole, most programs are available on x86 for the G14. And so it would lead most people to be like, okay, well then I just, unfortunately the, you know, the MacBook Pro is amazing, but I just don't have the applications available. And so that's that subset of people that I was saying in the beginning of the video, where it makes the most sense to choose the G14 over the M4 Pro. Now let's get into video editing. And this is where it gets really interesting. So if we're looking at playback for these two devices, looking at the M4 Pro, you can see we have zero drop frames for 6K B-RAW and then 1,958 for red footage. So pretty high resolution stuff, 6K footage. And then we have for the G14, 43 drop frames for B-RAW, and then 1,136 for red footage. So they're pretty neck and neck, even though we saw so much performance in the simulated benchmarks and so much performance in Photoshop. When you put these two laptops head to head with something intense like video encoding, they become much more neck and neck. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the export times. We're gonna do the 4K export out of Premiere Pro, you can see that the G14, we have a two minute and 19 second export time. The MacBook Pro, four minutes and 49 seconds. Basically double the export time. And so it kind of leads you to be like, hmm, plugged into the charger, I can get much faster export times out of the G14. However, when you unplug from the charger, and I wanna put up the various export times for the G14 so you can see it, you get two minutes and 55 seconds. So even unplugged from the charger, it's still quite a bit faster. However, when we go to the 6K export, this is where things start to look really good again for the MacBook Pro. I had the MacBook Pro M4 Pro unplugged from the charger and it exported the 6K clip in 15 minutes and 33 seconds. I was plugged into the charger on full performance mode. The fans are going crazy at like 58 decibels of fan noise and it exported in 15 minutes and 19 seconds. Now we still did have some fan noise, about 44 decibels, and we had about 92 to 101 degrees Celsius on the chipset for the MacBook Pro. You can see that with the B-roll footage on the screen, but it was unplugged from the charger. So it's gonna be a much more efficient battery life and even unplugged from the charger. So you're gonna be able to be wherever you wanna be, not near a, uh, any sort of outlet and be able to export. Where with the G14, that would take 30 plus minutes or longer if you were unplugged from the charger for the 6K footage. It's, it's hard because they both can get good performance for video editing but they do it in slightly different ways. And so that's where you have to decide, okay, which, what do I value more? Do I value having a dedicated GPU to be able to plug into the charger, export very quickly, have fast 4K export times, be able to 3D model, be able to game with the dedicated GPU, really whatever games I want, or do you want power efficiency? Do you wanna be able to export while not on the charger? Do you wanna be able to be on the go more? Do you wanna be able to have longer battery lives? That's where the MacBook Pro comes in because they both have really strong benefits. They both really get the job done quite well, and they both have great design aesthetic. I think that's one thing about the G14 this year, more than ever, is they've really st stepped it up with building a premium laptop to really take on the MacBook Pro. And besides the efficiency and battery life, they pretty much nailed it. And I think if they can get that battery life nailed down, the MacBook Pro has some serious concerns in real world testing. Let me know which one you would pick. I personally would still be leaning towards the MacBook Pro for the on-the-go efficiency and battery life. That really, really speaks to me. Um, but if I was a 3D modeler, I must say the G14 would have to be my pick. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more head-to-head -head reviews to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.